pause the music and let's go in game all right looks like we're sorted looks like we're set all right then guys all right so welcome 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 back to the empire collective cup and uh, we're gonna kick things off here today with some recorded games because these games were played the other day sadly i missed them i wasn't able to cast them live uh, but since they have been posted on the forums, I will do the coverage of these games because it's Juan ver uh, no, it's not Juan, sorry. It's, uh, it's Say My Name. Yeah, that's right, say it. And uh, we've got him versus Mr. Yo for the Platinum League. And uh, obviously, I want to cover all of the Platinum Le League games if possible. I'll do my damnedest to do it, uh, get as much coverage as I can. So, yeah, we're going to be starting here with these guys. For some reason this game started at four minutes in. Uh, maybe there was a drop at the start and uh, they decided to not include the first part of the game, which is fine really because this is a nomad start as they are playing on decentering for game one. According to Nightbot, it is still Baltic, but no, it is decentering actually. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes. We got Nomura Sivs again. Over to the left side of the map in the blue, we have Mr. Yo, and he is playing as the Mongols. And over on the right side of the map in the gray, we have Say My Name, aka VNS Yellow, and he's playing as the Britons over here. Now, I really, really do like this map. I think it's such a cool map, and uh, we've seen. Some massive, epic, epic fails on this map so far. Uh, not to mention um, MBL failing miserably, like falling flat on his ass when he played this one. And also not to mention Hira, who forgot to build a dock and subsequently couldn't go up to the feudal age. So yeah, there's been a few mishaps on this map to say the least. And uh, it's a little awkward, I think, for some of the players when that happens. But I think these guys are going to be fine. These guys obviously have, um, I think, a little more experience than the other players that have made these uh, mishaps. And especially on this map as well, since this map was part of War is Coming. And both of these teams, uh, guys played in War is Coming in different teams. Thank you very much, Elite Teutonic Knight, for resubscribing eight months in a row. Yeah, baby. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's, uh, that's a long time. Like, eight, eight months is a long time. Like, I've had subscriptions for 15 months now. Like, that is such a long while. It's nearly a year and a half I've been streaming for. And uh, I think now, I don't know, it's really starting to pick up a little more as well. Not just with viewers, but like, I don't know. I feel like I'm streaming more. I don't actually know if I am streaming more than I used to, but um, I'm going to try and do more. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, the thing is, I like to stream other stuff as well. I like to stream Hearthstone. I like to stream um, a bit of Counter-Strike. And uh, I don't know what you guys think about that. There's always less viewers, but I like to stream those things. And uh, I get a lot of a lot of joy from those games. And I like to try and, you know, I want to share those guys with uh, those games with you. Uh, I don't think we need Team Colors on this time around, really a dinosaur, oh, because... We've got, uh, say my name in the grey, and we've got Yo in the blue. And grey is fairly easy to see with the dark grey patch on, so I think no team colours is good for this one. Uh, but anyway, Britons versus Mongols, and it's an interesting one, because obviously the Britons get the sheep bonus, and the Mongols get the hunt bonus. Now this map, well, there's only four huntable animals, and there are, I believe, a total of uh, six herdable animals, like sheep. So, you kind of, take into consideration that the deer have 140 food, uh, I think the bonuses end up coming out about the same, really. Uh, the sheep bonus for the Brits is going to be maybe marginally, marginally less value than the, the Mongols hunt bonus, but really not a lot. And I think these sieves kind of balance out quite well on this map for the start, anyway. Now, on this map, of course, it's really important to take a lot of food as quickly as you can because there's not a lot of food on your starting island. Now, if you fanny around and take too much wood and then build a dock and start fishing, then you might end up in a situation where you kind of don't have the food because you've spent too long making villages. If you spend too long in the Dark Age and make too many villages, then you run out of natural quick gathering food and you're forced to make fishing ships. And fishing ships take a lot longer to get your return on investment. So it's a reason why you see Mr. Yo here on the left side. He is shore fishing and he is taking the deer uh, as fast as he can. 
Whereas Yellow, say my name, uh, he's doing a little bit more wood at the moment, but no shorefish really. There's got one villager here just going out to the shorefish now. And I think it's really important to note that the shorefish here can make or break a Dark Age start on this map, especially when you consider there's 200 additional fish uh, food on a shorefish. <laughs> How many cannon gallons did you make on this map? Asks uh, Ja Ikoi. Um, well, it depends, really. If you get to the late stages of the game, then as many as you can, because they're going to be really, really useful to you. Obviously, if you can control the water in the late game, then cannon galleons are basically going to be able to terrorize the edge of the maps uh, for eternity. <laughs> like, endlessly. It's going to be huge. But anyway, both these guys docking at the moment, and uh, currently yellow ahead in the score. Possibly because of his scouting information. If we have a quick look, he's actually scouted a lot. He's scouted using the sheep, and he's got some good idea of what's going on on the edge of the map. He's scouted the entirety of the center of the map with his uh, transport ship. And Mr. Yo, uh, also doing a lot of scouting, but not quite as much in my opinion. It's also worth noting that Yellow is two villagers ahead. He's two whole villagers ahead, uh, possibly getting his TC up just a, a, a moment faster. But uh, this is looking very good for him. At the moment, Mr. Yo has less food in the bank. He's got one villager queued up, two villagers queued up, and 48 food. And Say My Name has one villager queued up and 268 food. So right now, Yellow has gathered more food by quite a margin. And uh, he's going to be looking to do a, a pretty fast feudal time here. And I get the feeling he's going to be able to pull it off as well. He also has an additional fishing ship right now. And that is, of course, going to be adding to his food income over time. So I think Say My Name's build up, his Dark Age start here, has been fantastic. And like I said, not, a while, uh, not long ago, uh, the Dark Age start really sets you up for the rest of the game. And if you do it good, then you're going to be putting your good foot forwards and you're going to be getting yourself an early advantage. And that's what it's all about. Rig First says, when, do you, when should you migrate to the land? Well, Yellow is already going out, and there's no real, like, correct time to do it, I suppose. But if you were to take the consensus of these two guys at 13 minutes and 30 seconds, because that's when they are both moving out to the edge of the map. Now, it's important to move out to the edge of the map early on this one, because the wood on the home island is pretty small. There's not a lot of wood available here, and so for that reason, players will want to build a lumber camp out at the edge for some more sustainable forestry. Uh, it's not very sustainable chopping the wood on this island, because it just it disappears way too, way too quickly. Uh, thank you very much, Zach is my wet dream, for resubscribing as well. Ten months in a row, you legend. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, like right now, say my name, definitely, definitely ahead. He's got an extra villager, he's got an extra fishing ship, and he's also faster up to the feudal age. So lots and lots of stuff tipped in his favor at the moment as they both start sending more villagers out to the edge. The interesting part really comes when you have to kind of decide, okay, do I want to focus more on water or do I want to kind of focus on land? Because both players are very well aware that the other player is going to have this lumber camp out at the edge. So sometimes you'll see a player doing a barracks and an archery range and they'll go and attack on the outside. Sometimes, alternatively, you'll see them ignore that and they'll wall. Because walling in the early game is obviously fine while water control is still up for, for, for grabs. It's still contested. And then they'll focus more on water. I feel like that is the better thing to do. Now, Mr. Yo showing signs of weakness. Six villagers rushing to build that dock there as he uh, probably forgot to build his second dock fast enough and now queuing up a couple of galleys when he can afford them. But Yellow already has two galleys queued up and one is about to pop out right now. And he is obviously heading straight towards that dock of Yellow because he knows that Mr. Yo is fishing. So this extra fishing ship for Yellow right now is pretty huge. And I want to make a video as well, a guide video, uh, just showing the importance of fishing. Because it's important to remember that on water maps, fishing ships, uh, well, the reason why on water maps water is so hotly contested is because of the advantage that fish give. And just having one extra fishing ship right now could be bringing in a lot of extra food for Yellow. The question is, how much extra food? And I think that's a question worth answering. Um, but right now, Yellow's putting his third dock up, whilst Mr. Yo is not. He is currently scrambling for wood. He just doesn't have enough wood income. And he's still taking sheep underneath his TC here to keep those villagers coming out. Yellow 
still has a villager advantage. Three more villagers right now. And he is really just relying on these four fishing ships to provide all of his food income. He has no other food income from any villagers or anything like that. And if he loses these ships now, then that could be pretty catastrophic. He is only just able to keep villager production going with these three and this one over here. So Mr. Yo coming in, trying to disrupt the waters a little bit. And uh, Mr. Yo here, not going to be able to find a fishing ship killed just yet. Now, obviously, you can imagine just how devastating it would be if one of these players managed to kill a transport ship full of villagers. That would be five villagers lost to the seas. They'll be, you know, sinking down to the bottom of the ocean. It would be pretty horrendous. Uh, but in Mr. Yo's situation, he can keep his boats pretty safe by pulling them back to his dock and garrisoning villagers inside of the town center to keep them safe and... Uh, to also fire at the galleys and have a super effective uh, damage bonus against them. So Yellow here, although he's got an advantage in villagers right now, he's actually not quite able to keep consistent villager production. I mean, it's kind of, his TC is coming idle every now and then. These four fishing ships, not quite enough to entirely keep uh, villager production coming out. And this one here falling idle as well. On the land, really not a lot going on yet. And... Uh, Say my name is going to take the time to build a mill now, knowing that he's kind of got the edge on the water with an extra three galleys out at this moment in time. But Mr. Yo has stuck his third dock up on this right side here, and uh, he is on the prowl looking to take some of these fishing ships down. But just to give you an idea of the food difference at this stage, it's not that huge. The difference is not huge. But you have to remember that because Mr. Yo has been taking the uh, the sheep underneath his TC and he's been, um, you know, taking a lot more food from uh, other sources than fish, he's fallen behind in wood quite a lot. He's fallen behind in gold and he's only just keeping up in food at the moment as well. So right now, I don't think we've got our, uh, the, the spectator dashboard isn't showing the upgrades at this point, I don't think. Unless I've, they've just not done any, but I imagine they will have boasted them double bit -axed by now. And I don't think I saw that come up on the right side. Um, but right now, yeah, Mr. Yo here on the right side will get one pick, but he's still behind in military count. And Yellow will come to the docks and once again push Mr. Yo away from the fish on this right hand side. Mr. Yo... Moving out, taking berries now, and that is really inefficient. He's got five villagers taking berries, and that is just poor when you consider that currently Yellow has four villagers taking gear, and they'll probably be able to gather more food in the same time as the five villagers gathering the berries. So much higher efficiency at this stage from Yellow, and he's also moving to berries as well. So a big, big amount of food coming in for him at the moment. Uh, well, I say big, big amount, but uh, he's seeding farms as well, so... His plan really, I think, is to get to the castle age fairly soon. Um, but certainly, certainly on the horizon for Yellow at this stage, because otherwise he certainly wouldn't be investing so much in food on the outside of the map, and he wouldn't be building the farms. Whereas Mr. Yo, currently, you don't see him taking uh, any farms outside of his TC. He is just on the berries, and that's it. His focus is going to be mostly, mostly on the water, and I believe... Mr. Yo doesn't have Fletching yet, neither does Yellow, uh, but they both have a blacksmith up. So I imagine Fletching will be coming in fairly soon for both of them, since I believe they can both just about afford it. Although saying that, Mr. Yo's food income is still pretty poor. These guys, these fishing ships have fallen idle again, and you can't sustain villager production off of five villagers on berries. And you certainly can't, uh, if you try and do that, you certainly can't uh, get Fletching as well. Mr. Yo nearly going to be able to take out, say, my name's transport ship there. It's a close one. But unfortunately for Yo, the transport ship slips away and he has to run back because Yellow has too many galleys out in force here. On the left side, Yellow's also going for the transport of Yo. And they're both pretty low. They're, in fact, they're both on 20 HP right now. But Yo's going to come back to his TC. Will Yellow stick it? Will he do it? It looks like he will. He's going to even tank the TC fire in favor of taking that transport ship down. And I honestly think that is probably worth it at this point. So Fletching is done for Yo. And uh, say my name does not have Fletching yet. But he still has three extra galleys on the water. Yellow is also very close to the castle age now. He's at 715 food, 178 gold, and he's just about to click up in any minute. 
Does he have a market? Yes, he does. And he's going to be able to pick up in a moment's time. Now, I'm a little concerned because Mr. Yo just took the military advantage there with that little engagement on the north. And that means that uh, Mr. Yo might be able to do a little bit of damage here to Yellow um, on the water. But Yellow, if he's careful now and keeps these uh, these galleys out of harm's way, if he keeps them away from Mr. Yo's army, he could just wait, he could bide his time, and once he gets that Castle Age upgrade, he's going to have War Galley out, and that's going to be huge for him, giving him a big advantage on the water, and uh, will definitely be able to open the opportunity to maybe take this TC down from Mr. Yo, maybe disrupt the villagers on the gold, maybe even take down a dock. So whatever Yellow decides once he's got up to the Castle Age. But notice how he delayed fletching here. Yellow not going for fletching until after he's clicked up to the Castle Age. So that shows me that uh, he's really thinking about prioritizing the Castle Age upgrade here. And it's kind of a good idea to do that. Now the problem for Yellow is that He's kind of got a fight against Mr. Yo here on the water still, because if he doesn't, Mr. Yo will also take down a dock, and he really doesn't want to lose a dock as well. But still, villager count, or villager-wise, Yellow is still ahead, even after being upgraded uh, to the Castle Age for 61%, and leaving his TC idle all that time, uh, in terms of making villagers. So, Yo, I feel, is, is really falling behind here, and with the Castle Age upgrade, it could be pretty pivotal for Yellow. But I think he's making a small mistake. I think it might be worthwhile for him to almost sacrifice this dock in favor of uh, keeping more galleys alive. He is two down, and it is really hard to tell exactly how many galleys you have or if you have an advantage or not. But it should be fairly obvious, looking at this fight, that Yellow here is behind. And I think he just... He should maybe just sacrifice this dock here. It looks like it's going to go down anyway. So that's a small victory for Mr. Yo. Yellow will just build another dock on the right side, I imagine. In fact, yeah, he's already got one over here. So there you go. There you go. Um, War Galley coming in, of course. And we'll probably see Bodkin Arrow as well. There it is. And so this is going to be a big advantage for Yellow now. Mr. Yo chasing him down, knowing that he's got a military advantage. But Yellow, as soon as that upgrade pops, can just flick back around and uh, spank Mr. Yo in the face with his fully upgraded War Galleys, pretty much. Um, what do I think about AoE 4? Um, how do you mean? Are you referring to um, Age of Empires Online or an Age of Empires 4 that has not been announced yet? I'm not, sh I'm not sure. But I, I kind of am hopeful. I'm definitely hopeful for an Age of Empires 4. I'd really like to see that. I think it would be great. But considering they're working on African kingdoms right now, I kind of imagine it's not quite in the pipeline just yet. Or if it is, it's quite a way away. So currently, Yellow here, moving out with his war galleys, and he's going to be able to wreak havoc onto Mr. Yo's island, potentially. Mr. Yo building a tower here, a watchtower. Kind of unusual to see a watchtower placed, but they are super duper effective against galleys. Unfortunately, it's going to go down, because Say My Name just has too many boats for Mr. Yo to handle. No amount of repairs are going to save him there. And uh, Mr. Yo, while he goes up to the Castle Age here, he's going to have a lot of villager idle time as these villagers run to the TC for safety. The problem is now as well that these guys are kind of trapped here. Um, they have to stay on this island for their the remaining days at this point, because Yellow will have him surrounded until Yo can retake the water. And right now, Mr. Yo still has a galley advantage, so he's doing a great job of keeping those galleys alive in uh, in an awkward situation. Of course, Yellow now coming down to the south, looking to find some villagers on the wood line there. He's also going to take down one of the docks from Mr. Yo as well. And if Mr. Yo's brought down to two docks, it's going to be difficult for him to keep up, I think. But still, on the edge of the map, Yellow sitting back, he's just got himself walled, he's not going to bother with any land aggression at all, and building his second TC out on the right, taking advantage of course of the cheaper TCs for the Britons, and uh, giving him uh, an extra place to build villagers from, uh, without having to send them all out to the edge of the map as soon as they come onto the map, so there you go, uh, or get spawned rather. Uh, this is annoying for Yo now. I think Mr. Yo probably has a lot more idle time this game. Indeed he does. He's got 54 minutes of idle time and 31 minutes of game time. Uh, Yellow has 35 minutes of idle time, so uh, 20 more minutes of idle time for Yo, and it's kind of reflected in the resources gathered. Say my name is ahead on all counts. What about, though, 
the number of kills, the number of deaths, and things like that. Because Yo, even though he's not been in the best position with his eco, his micro, his ability to manage his army, certainly seems to be on top at this point. Because he has got 16 kills and 7 deaths. He's been able to trade very well. And even with a, a semi, semi idle eco, he's still been able to make the. the well, do the damage where he needs to do it and keep himself in this game. It's really still very close. And I think overall it ends up being quite even uh, at the end of the day. So right now, Mr. Yo building up some docks on the north. And of course, Yellow has no idea about this at all. I think this is good for Mr. Yo now. I think it's great that he's doing that because he's really putting a lot of focus on taking water control here. Duking these guys by moving across so that the uh, arrows can't hit and chasing yellow away with a much larger army um, at first glance and also just in numbers. He's got uh, four extra, five extra galleys right now and that's probably going to start getting uh, even even larger as well because yellow not building any more galleys uh, or docks sorry out at the edge and he's just relying on these three docks now to get water control not realizing that Mr. Yo is actually on four the university coming up for yellow, looking for ballistics, no doubt, and he can afford that now, so he'll do that straight away. The big difference here, I think, is that Mr. Yo is very aggressive on the water now. Like, he is, de like, determined. He's throwing everything he's got at taking this water back, and the result of that is that Yellow is going to get ahead in villages. He's got 51 vills out compared to Mr. Yo's 35. He's got the second TC up out at the edge of the map. And although Mr. Yo can possibly kill a few villagers on this center island, he is still, uh, you know, almost 20 villagers down at this point. Which is not, um, not advisable. You don't want to fall too far behind in villagers because then your opponent can almost afford to make bad trades and bad plays because their eco is going to compensate for that. But Mr. Yo is adding his second TC now as well and he'll get there eventually I'm sure. But uh, at the moment he's got a long way to go if he wants to catch up in village account. And I guess at the moment he's really just relying on his, his better micromanagement, his better army control to win himself the minor victories on the water. At the edge of the map he's also taking the sheep and I'm kind of waiting to see when something at the edge will develop because it's probably not going to be too long now. And I think this is where the Mongols could really excel. I think that although yes the water is really important and it gets more important as the game goes on, I think it's actually really nice for the Mongols if they can actually make a stable and make a couple of knights out on the edge of the map. Obviously, Yellow's walled himself up, but a single palisade wall is not difficult to deal with with a few knights. And I don't think it would be too crazy for Mr. Yo to attempt that at some point. Now, obviously, as we know, he's currently focusing on eco, he's focusing on water. And for him to do knights now, he'd probably have to make a little bit of a sacrifice. But other than that, I think it's probably worthwhile for him to do it. Um, let's have a quick look, though. He's taken quite a bit of stone, which makes me think he's probably sold some at the market. And uh, he has. He sold 100 stone at the market here for gold, possibly to buy himself to the castle age a little faster, or something along those lines. Spectator dashboard. I love the spectator dashboard. It's great. So much info available there. Uh, Mr. Yo currently then exactly 20 villagers behind though. And uh, he is also two military units behind as well. But you have to bear in mind, Mr. Yo in this situation is fighting against an army that keeps getting split up and uh, Yellow keeps to like just keeps putting his army in two different places not keeping them together but bringing them together now to, to win this fight will be great for him as he gets a very solid five galley lead on the water <laughs> um you, you, Snooker Ball said I added your Hearthstone TWSS to the zero quote subreddit. Um, I'm not sure what TWSS it means. What's what's TWSS? <laughs> Let me check it. I'll do Reddit forward slash R forward zero and five. Oh, the zero quotes, right? Zero quotes. Let's see. What do you mean by that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know what you mean now. Alright, anyway, big whoop fight on the water, and this should go really well for Yellow here. He's got a great number advantage, and he's kind of got Mr. Yo pushed into the edge 
of the map. So if Mr. Yo wants to escape, there's very little places that he can go. He can go left or he can go right, but he's gonna have to go through the fire of Yellow. And Yellow has ballistics now, remember, so additional damage being done. And this is the perfect position for Yellow to just take this fight and absolutely destroy everything Mr. Yo holds dear. And that is gonna be the GG. Mr. Yo realizes at that stage that he is so far behind there, uh, unable to take a good fight. The positioning ended up being pretty poor in the end, and Mr. Yo could just slip, uh, couldn't slip out since Yellow had ballistics researched, and that just goes to show how important ballistics can be when it comes to fighting on the water, or in fact uh, in any situation with ranged units, because it puts your opponent into a situation where if they're going to lose, then you're just going to make sure that they lose entirely, like everything. In this situation, Mr. Yo, he knew he was going to lose, but he had no real way of escaping. And that's only because ballistics is so strong um, and, and really helped Yellow there. He could just you know, pin the nail in that coffin and uh, see Mr. Yo out. So there you go. Yellow going to get game number one with a great start for him. And uh, I, I don't know if that's expected as such. I, I think... Mr. Yo is obviously a very, very strong player, perhaps arguably a little stronger than Yellow.